My name is Manfred Nikitzer. I'm the production designer for the current Scorpions Rock Believer World Tour. We started off uh, last year in Las Vegas and uh, still continuing this year. We are currently in Mannheim in Germany having our second show. Just came back from South America and proceeding all over Europe over the summer. I started with Scorpions nine years ago, actually as a video programmer. Um, came into the production, was just responsible for media server programming. And at one point, the show went to North America, needed a redesign. Rainer, who is still with me, was in charge for lighting back then. We uh, redesigned the show for North America a little bit and, you know, step by step that proceeded. And finally, after COVID, um, the band said, okay, we want to have a complete new show design. And that was the moment when I said, okay, I have a few ideas. May I present them to you? That's what I did. And I think they like what they've seen, obviously. And uh, it's a pretty cool hard rock show. Very um, old school, straightforward with modern elements, I'd say, um, but still with the uh, hard rock DNA with a lot of modern technology to, you know, have a show that people expect nowadays, I'd say. Las Vegas was a perfect opportunity for us to rehearse the show. We didn't really rehearse that much, to be honest. We had like four or five days production rehearsals. But the nice thing in Las Vegas was that we were in the Sepo Theater. I think it's named differently now, but it's a super nice venue. It has a very, very great local crew. Um, they were so helpful. They supported us with everything. And the nice thing is you basically have a dark room 24 hours so you can program and rehearse and you know just make the show to a really good looking touring show coming just from previous which was a great base but you know the final tweaks are always on the real system. In Vegas it was a little different the stage is way bigger than on a traditional arena show it's just you know these Vegas venues that have you know, in an arena we are 60 feet or 18 meters wide. In Vegas we were, I think, 28 meters or even wider because it's this almost over 180 degree concept. Um, so for the audience it's the, it was a very, very good venue because they always feel like they are super close to the, to the band. Wherever you sit, you never have the feeling that you're far away. Um, for us, it was a good starting off point. We had the opportunity to think already in a very, very early stage how we have a scalable production. So what we did, we just spread things a little further out, increased fixture distances, all of these little bits and tweaks, but the actual idea stayed the same. And that gave us a perfect starting point for the tour. My original idea was that I want to have this rock band feeling together again, that they don't look like they are lost on this big stage, that they are, you know, interacting with each other. So the ultimate idea was to have this huge drum riser that is the central element for the show. Um, so this was the starting point. I created this drum riser and thought, okay, how could the band get up to the drum riser, but still have the drum riser as an own element? So this is when the stairs came in, we tried various fixtures uh, that would work for the stairs. We tried out what could work, what doesn't work as well for the band, and what looks good, what has this hard rock uh, look. And then that combined with the stage set is, I think, the current DNA for the look of the entire show, because it is a full rock look with lighting only on the floor and no LED screen or something like that, it's just lighting. And that's, that's the easiest or the best way for me to put the energy into the music visually as much as I can. So that way, you know, you can just underline every little detail of the drums, of the guitars, and it's always right in the background of the band. So that means if they are on the IMAX, uh, with video, whatever happens behind them will be on the IMAX as well. So this is like this multiplicator, I'd say, into the audience over video again. If you have a proper floor set, and if it's in the right height, in the right background, and if it works with the camera angles and all of that, it's just this huge effect. Speaking about the retro style, I think it's a very 80s old school look because the entire look of the set design works without any lights on. It's like it's these steps 
with metal on all the sides, with the background, with the half circle set card in the background, with this rusty uh, metal surface in the front, and there's a different kind of metal surface on the top of the riser. So all of these materials combined are already the set design without any lighting on. And that's the cool thing. I said, I want to have something that looks great without any lights on. But of course, the show even gets better with a proper overhead rig. This, however, is supplied locally in every country via local partners. And that's the point where Scorpions is very different to any other production of this scale. A strong show under these parameters requires a strong production core team that is willing to go the extra mile. Pre-production and advancing is not always fun. But I have to say, with our production manager Roland and our production director Olaf, we have a great workflow. I always say, teamwork makes the dream work. I'm the production manager for the Scorpions since 11 years. And uh, yeah, we are touring since this time worldwide, all over the planet in all five continents. And, uh, and my job is basically to organize all logistics and uh, help with designing, with our design crew. The challenge with the Scorpions actually is that we are touring worldwide only with uh, two trucks or two sea containers. We have four different uh, backline sets which are constantly touring around the planet, flying or in sea containers to cover all the different tours. And the challenge is that everywhere where we go, we rely on local equipment. We rely on local companies, local equipment, uh, which is challenging sometimes in different markets, obviously, like South America, we just came from South America. And uh, well, it's not easy sometimes to find in Manaus the exact desk you need, for example, like a you know, PM Rivage, you know, PM7 or PM10 Rivage, uh, to get the lamps. And uh, so this is very challenging, to be honest. It's a lot of pre-work we have to do, so the advancing is very time-costing, time-intensive. And um, you need also a designer, especially a lighting designer, who is very capable of adjusting uh, local equipments to our, to our look, our show. Manfred and I, we are working together since 10 years. And uh, we worked also before uh, in, in, in musicals together. We worked in gospel shows together. And he's now here with the Scorpions. And um, the thing with Manfred is, that's what I said before also, that he is uh, capable of adjusting all different equipments to his desk which is uh, you need to be a very, very good programmer, obviously, and you need to be very fast. And you need to have in the same moment also the skills of the, the music, to feel the music and to rely on the music uh, because uh, everything is always different and still it has to be the same look for the show. And this is uh, just, just a few people I know can do this, to be honest. The set is basically the same set that they have this, uh, since 40 years. It's. Uh, straightforward rock band, a straightforward uh, rock music, you know, with a lot of hits, a lot of new songs, but the, also the new songs are made in the same line. It's a rock show, you know, which is good. It don't need any glitter, it don't need flitter, it don't need special effects, it don't need flames or, or fires. After Corona, we made a new design and we worked together to make it then durable. The most important thing for the band was to really have a strong, powerful show again. With the new album, also the band approached me and was like, "We have a few songs we really that really need special moments, special looks, looks that are not typical, looks that look different from all the other songs, like Seventh Sun or something." You know, we discussed a lot about those songs in the design phase or in the content production phase, actually, because we really tried to find examples for each song, what they feel or what made them write a song, made them play whatever note they do. That was really the most exciting part to me because you have these conversations. That's when the great ideas are born, I feel like. All of these new songs from the new album are in the Scorpions DNA written, I'd say, but they are all very unique and different. Having enough tools in the stage set and in the rig and in general gives you the chance to create these unique looks. The stairs and the drum riser are a special construction with built-in ProLights arena cops. And that's surrounded by a half circle of traditional set cards with a metal fascia in the front. 
All these set cards were built and developed together with our partner Shoko Pro and our production manager Roland. In the set cards we have JDC lines that break the set card in three rows and in these three rows we have LED washes, we are working with LED Beam 350 from Robe. We were looking for something that has the right form factor, the right output with not too much power requirement. The overhead rig is based out of eight fingers that are slightly angled over the stage. Each finger has eight spots and seven strobes with one eight light blind in the front. And we have side torms with mega pointies on the sides. And all of that is connected to Follow Me remote follow system. And we also having a front truss with 15 spots and a back truss with nine spots that are for key lighting only. We get most of the gear locally in the countries. In our rider, we just specify the fixture type and the brightness category, but not which kind of fixture. So sometimes you get Mac Ultra, sometimes you get Robe Forte, sometimes you get something from Ayrton or from Clay Packy. Um, we just say we need 64 proper spots in the, in the rig and would like to have um, 56 strobes of the kind of JDC ones. And the side ladders, we want to have 48 beams with CMY, preferred product Mega Point Tape, but we are cool with Sharpie Plus, with Elations, whatever. We are only carrying two trucks of gear with us. One of it is uh, the entire stage set, everything that's on the floor, lighting and set-wise. And the second truck is the backline, the video cameras, and the entire, I'd say, video lighting and media heart of the show, which means we're carrying one lighting console, just for backup reasons. Um, we carry the entire snake motion fiber system with the front of house and the stage rack. So this, this main line of connection between front of house and stage is with us. We don't have to wait on a show day for any special snake that's maybe not existing in this country or whatever. You know, we don't, we try to minimize these surprises as much as we can. So what we are carrying is, other than the cameras, the media servers, the disguise servers, we carry our own follow me remote follow system. The nice thing on that system is you're totally independent on the fixtures. We do the recalibration of five points and the entire system is ready. We are here in the middle of the setting up process of the support band Thunder Mother, as you can see behind me. They will start off the night. Each finger has eight uh, Robe 40 here in Germany. Um, and seven JDC1 strobes, and in the very front, the very powerful and bright rocks uh, cluster full color blinders that are one of my favorites, I'd say, in the rig because it's uh, hard to find very strong, powerful LED blinders that have proper color, are still bright, but are able to dim in and out like an old school DWE blinder and are able to strobe at the same time. So this is a real great fixture. On the floor, some uh, ProLight Arena cups. They are small and compact in size and are the central element. Four letters on each side with uh, six mega points per torm. And on the downstage end, we have uh, six Highlander wash as uh, stage wash. We have a back truss with nine BMFL wash beams as backlights for the band, and we have a front truss with 15 BMFL wash beams as key lighting for the band. All of the fixtures are on a follow me remote follow system, uh, so we are able to use all the fixtures, everything that's up there, for solo moments. So the band can basically go wherever they want. We are sure that all the lights are on them at the right moment. So let's go on stage. So this is how the band enters before the show. We have a huge back screen, but with a little door so they can get on stage. They all go to their backline worlds to the left and to the right once they are here. And this is the way for our drummer. Watch your head. And here we are on stage on the drum riser. This is a custom-made 
drum riser with 83 Pro Lights Arena cops that are built all the way around, all with this metal construction, very old school traditional hard rock look, I'd say. The entire drum riser is surrounded with these lighting cards. We have nine lighting cards. They all have this front surface, this rusty metal look. That's the basic background, the theatrical background without, that looks already fantastic and very hard rocky um, without any lights on. In front of the lighting cards we have uh, X4 bars, so this surface can have any color. And behind uh, the metal structure we have LED washes, in this case Robe LED Beam 350, very small compact unit, love them, great colors, great output, don't need too much power, perfect fixture for what we are doing. And they still have enough output that goes through the uh, surface in the front. And then between each, between each uh, row of uh, LED beams, we have GLP JDC lines, so that surrounds the entire drum riser with a nice bright strobe line. On top of these set cards, we have uh, 18 mega pointies and seven JDC one strobes. For the drum riser, we have three cameras that are. Here, one here, one there, and another one is here on the back, uh, mounted on the set card that enables us to get great shots from the drummer from all angles. The video part is the first time that it was so important for the band. Before it was always with us, but n never that obvious. They created really 3D pictures, they created strong content where it needs to be strong and very connected to the music Scorpion's doing. The cool thing with this current show design is that we really were able to start off from zero. So we had the idea of the stage, how the stage looks, presented that to the band, they liked what they've seen. Then we proceeded with some um, ideas how the video content could look like and how we connect video and lighting and live camera integration with video content and with lighting again, so all of these elements meld together and with the music. We try to give each song an own set piece, I'd say, that's virtually on the show, but that looks like it could be a real piece that is part of the stage. Most of the video contents really have the same concept again as the original lighting design, which was how could this stage look like if it would be in a theater and we would build a set like a, a background out of real material. The layers on top are all connected to the lighting, so if ropes, blinders, whatever come up, there comes a layer in that transforms the, the uh, video content to something else as well. So the visual change happens on multiple levels, it's not just lighting. Here is the local follow me, they all can talk via our, our Green Go intercoms with the uh, front of house, with Reiner, who is in charge of uh, everything that's Follow Me related. We all have a big intercom system uh, with Green Go, so we can all speak to each other. And uh, Otto, who is over here, who is in charge of the live camera direction. So, uh, welcome to the video world. In this setup, we are actually using Qpilot to do the live cutting. So we got the whole set list here and here and have like all the different layers we can cut on. Um, actually, really the live cutting. If something happens or something is not going as planned, um, we have the opportunity to like override the, the actual cutting right now. Um, via this MIDI craft boards. Um, that's quite cool. It's connected over Universe. So we, Universe receives all the data from uh, Qpilot and merges that um, for us. So I really can like leave the Qpilot running, 
can override during the songs whatever I want to do. If I feel like we want to come back to Qpilot, I can just do it via one button press, actually. These components go with us everywhere. So this really is the backbone for, for that show. Our entire show is managed by a multiple uh, Luminex switches. So we have a huge Luminex network that connects all elements that are involved into our show with each other. Thanks to a proper KVM system, we have access basically from everywhere we have network. We are combining the MANet, the ArtNet, streaming ACN net that is basically just talking to follow me and the media servers. And then we are having a network for uh, GreenGo intercoms. We have a huge black magic media net. And then we have our special workhorse uh, universe control uh, custom program system. Uh, that is accessible with, through these MIDI boards. Uh, also, I can override a video camera cut from the lighting console via Telnet. So this is, I think, very advanced because having live access but then swapping back to the pre-programming again is quite cool and quite flexible and that enables us to work with a very small crew on a quite advanced technical production. So uh, my name is Marian Kuch. I am the Scorpions monitor engineer uh, since uh, almost uh, three years now. Yeah, I'm doing monitors for the guys, only in-ears, no wedges. And um, yeah, it's a lot of fun, hard work, but a lot of fun. Klaus isn't using real molds, custom in-ears, he's using generics. Good generics, but generics. Um, he does this because of the audience. He wants to stay in connection with the audience and he doesn't want to use ambience mics or kind of Atmo mixes, he wants a direct connection, so he wants an open in-ear sound, um, and so he uses generics since ages. And uh, the challenge here is um, that you have to adjust the, the whole in-ear mix through the venue. So when you play open air and you don't have these kind of boomy arena sound in the closed venue, um, you have to adjust the low mids, for example, the, the, the slap back that has some reflections in the low end that you definitely will hear when you have open molds. So you have to adjust them, them, his mix master in the way and his vocal mic in the way that it fits together with the sound. He will hear, definitely hear the noise level from outside, from the, from the venue. So it's uh, not that same reproducible sound every show. You have to take adjustments regarding on the venue. So this is very challenging. And um, the rest of the band is using good Good custom in-ears with uh, real molds from JH Audio, um, Roxanne's, and um, there you don't have the problem that much. It's mostly Klaus mix where you have to do these tiny adjustments in the mix master. Due to the, to the fact that we are uh, traveling international, uh, we, we don't have the looks, the, the, the good situation that we have the same PA at every place in the world. There are vendors that have L acoustics, that have DNP or Addison or Maya sound, and so we have to do these adjustments in the PA as well. Um, it is not a problem at all because when you are when you are tuning that size, you always have good system and good guys tuning that system. So uh, it works, but you have to do adjustments, and they are quite different uh, because when you have, for example, the DNB GSL system, you have a very quiet stage. Not only in the basses, what you can reproduce with with uh, sub cardio eat stuff, even with L acoustics, for example, very good. But with the with the DNB stuff, you have a quiet stage, even in the mids, in the low mids, and this is uh, this this is very interesting. For example, Mickey, the drummer, really likes the the slap back from the venue, the boomy sound, and everything. And when we play with the GSR system, he's like, "Oh wow, it's, I don't hear anything," yeah, uh, because he's used to feel it. And um, so the the boomy stage is not always bad, for example. And um, this you need to find a compromise. So yeah, but in the end, it, we have to rely on good system engineers and most of the time we have them. I am uh, more the Digico guy, actually, but um, uh, since uh, Yamaha released the Revash system, I was quite open for it to see if, uh, if it can challenge up-to-date Digico boards. And yeah, I think of course it can. It, uh, it's, an, it's the typical Yamaha philosophy. Yamaha is not known for a sounding board. It's more deep, deep, neutral thing. You can do everything on it, 
but it has that warm custom sound that you maybe know from the old Midas desk or even from the digital preamps, for example. And you have uh, now you have tools to do it if you want to do it, like for example the the silk preamps, um, where you can put in these characteristics rec away from the from the new neutral sounding characteristica. Uh, you have lots of things that make this board even an, an, an monitor board. For example, you can switch in the input channels if the on button mutes the channel or the send. With the CL5, for example, you can't do this. So in my opinion, this disqualifies it for, for a monitor board. Um, you have lots of routing options uh, for, for monitors, for talk things and talkbacks and uh, crew talks. And um, yeah, and it's, it's, in my opinion, it's a good board. Yeah. I have some Waves plugins running, but it's only a handful. It's just uh, Vitamin on the mix buses to, 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 to bring them a little bit up. But uh, for example, the, the, the master bus compressor is really good from the Revive system. So it's more in question of taste. Mostly I have the inside stuff. The effects sound great, the compressors sound great. Yeah, so and we have a uh, custom made channel strip for Klaus from a Danish guy who in the past, he built uh, all the custom stuff for the, for the backline guys as well, for the guitar routings and uh, uh, input switching systems. And uh, I, I think now he's mostly known for, for creating uh, bass pedals under the name Caveman. And um, yeah, we have these custom preamps. It's, it's an, a nice channel strip. It's a custom made system that basically is fully analog, but is kind of cloned from different other systems. For example, this is made like a Neve preamp, this 11 is a 76 compressor style, this is an SSL style equalizer. You can do use a parallel mode with a, with a compressor, which is pretty cool actually. And um, I'm, I'm just doing minor adjustments like high frequency, low frequency boost and a little bit of parallel compression. Um, but it does its job really good. The, the Ezer is awesome. We have an amazing drummer with large, large cymbals. And when Klaus is standing in front of the drums and it's moving, we have lots of cymbal crosstalk uh, uh, to the microphone. And with the Azure, I can uh, adjust it in a, in a, in a, in a manner that, that it doesn't affect his vocals too much, but uh, you don't have these cymbal bleed on his microphone. It's working pretty cool. His capsule is, uh, is a custom made from Sennheiser. I think it's about 15 years ago or so. It's quite a while. Um, and it's it's an hypercardioid, but an an wide one, not that not that narrow. So maybe it's a thing between the cardioid and the hypercardioid. And um, the 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 cancelling to the high frequency stays good over the whole over the whole pattern. Yeah, and the capsule sounds good. We have a few of them, and uh, they're traveling with us everywhere we go. The rest is quite standard rock and roll setup uh, with two microphones on each cap. It's an 57 and uh, I think a Royal 101 um, ribbon mic. And uh, yeah, my, my, my EQs are mostly flat. This is a well good setup systems, great sounding amps. Uh, Great techs, so very experienced guys that exactly know what, what it has to sound. So we put a microphone in front of it and yeah, it's low cuts and maybe some taste tweaks, but yeah, in general, good sounding gear, really good sounding gear. So let's start from the top. This is uh, our, our wireless microphones. We only have the Klaus main and the Klaus spam microphone. It goes to an input selector where I can switch the microphones. So I don't have it on the mixing board and it stays the same input. That's great because when we have some frequency issues or other issues with this microphone, I can switch it and I don't need to talk to Achim or, or tell him because it's the same input on the stage box. So that's great. This is the backup system. This is the Sennheiser 6000 that we got from Sennheiser to, to test. We run these parallel at the moment. Then we have the band in years. Sennheiser 2050, classic. I'm still waiting for some digital coming up next year, maybe. I don't know. Um, this is the crew in years and the guest mixes. When we have guests, we have some guest packs here with some generic ears. Um, the Revash system, my wave servers and the laptops where I'm doing the virtual sound checks on with me and alive. 
hey, it's awesome. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a tough job, to be honest. It's a really tough job. But um, you're touring the world and you're working with well-experienced crew members. Everybody in the crew is here for a certain reason. And they are all very experienced guys and nice guys, by the way. And, uh, and the band is, is great as well. So we have a good connection. Feels like that, that, we, are, that we, are, we have kind of connection that it, it makes work fun for all of us. Every band, every musician, you know, lives and needs the contact to the people. That's why he's a musician. So of course, for the band, it was super important to tour again around the planet. I love to have a challenge every day, every new day, wherever we go. From here, we go to Brünn to create the same thing, which looks exactly the same, like here, in a completely different environment. We played Manaus. The next uh, two days later, we played El Salvador, you know, and to prepare it and then to execute it over there. Uh, this, that's a wonderful challenge. And this is the band you can do this. They are over 50 years on the stage. They know their audience. They know what they are doing and they know exactly what works and what doesn't. Like that was the actual fascinating thing. You present them stuff and they say, yeah, but that's not us. But then the more you look into them, you realize, oh, he's totally right. So it was really nice to present them ideas and get instant feedback and be like, yes, perfect, that's it, let's proceed that way, we like that. Those changes happen and are fun to be part of because I think that's the most exciting phase of a show.